involved in sexual abuse as a child. I uh, led to some post-traumatic stress disorders throughout my life and stuff that I didn't really deal with until uh, later in my years and uh, found myself broken and ended up in hospital and uh, was released. The first time I went to a shelter, that was because I, I was trying to escape from the abuse. Right now to rent, like, you need to be in, almost have a debt to, to be able to rent. Housing is the first line of defense against this pandemic. But when I was released, I was uh, just told to, you know, go, go find somewhere to stay. And I said, I had nowhere to go. I walk into the room and uh, I say that's the first time I saw needles because they were just on the bed. And there were sheets with blood all over them and the needles laying on the bed. Lost everything and homeless, going to be living out of my car and stuff. And uh... I left the next morning, and because they were trying to make arrangements, all the oh, shelters in Kitchener were full. It's easier to get a house than an apartment right now, based on based on your credit, and that's scary. And you know, when I got out of jail, I had twenty dollars to my name. Emergency settlements are needed for sanitary homes for those who do not have the option to self-isolate. Now we have COVID, it's, it's kind of like, I can't get it back because of a lot of things in life, you know, like pol policies and restrictions. I said, I'm able to get it back, I'm just waiting for it to get back. <laughs> so many women have seen abuse in so many ways. Mm -hmm. So she understood the cycle and she understood what I would go through. And so her and her mom spent the next couple days driving me around. I went to Lutherwood. I went to the region. I went to all of the places you're supposed to go. And then it's like, nope. I had to start fresh. And for someone to start fresh when you're dealing with depression, anxiety, any type of mental illness or an addiction. It, no, we have nothing. No, it's a weight. No, you need this. You need ID. I left with nothing. Do you understand? I escaped and I walked out with nothing. I was a working guy. Uh you don't have my own business. Um, I'm still that guy. It's just it's it's. I've taken a new perspective on on um, trying to get nested. I guess. Uh. Listen to people with lived experience. Listen to people who have been in the system. The only thing most people can afford is a rooming house at four hundred dollars a month, living with five other people. If people are unknowingly sick. The worst thing to do is uproot them and transplant them into a new community. Financially, most people are either on OW or ODSP until they start working. You know, a one-bedroom apartment out of their price range for sure. Like, I, like it's either I live and don't eat, eat and live on the street. Shelter and emergency housing is of paramount importance in the times of pandemic. I would like to see more transitional housing, right? More. Uh, outside the box way of, of giving people a place to stay with dignity until they get back on their feet. Mm -hmm. And I'm living off the charity of other people that are not exposed to this world. So I go back. Somebody who has no debt is not able to get a place yet. Somebody who's carrying debt is able to get a place. And I, I find that's kind of backwards. I'm like becoming homeless in those ways and coming up against those systems and those cycles show to me that we have no control. I think for anybody right now, the big thing is, is to put a stop to the rent increase that's going around right now. I've seen the same building advertised on a few sites. One apartment's $1,200. The other apartment's $1,600. Both one bedroom, both same footage, both same layout, different floor. One's just had way more tenant turnover. The minimum rent they're, they're or the maximum rent they're paying through uh, housing assistance right now and shelter allowance through the Ontario Works is just, it's so 20 years ago. The people who are getting the help really aren't getting the help. They're just getting the shovel in their hand to dig their own grave, you know.